I'm here at Dixon's Muzzle Loading Shop for the annual Gunmakers Fair of 2018. Uh, it's about 8.30 Friday morning, so it's opening day of the fair and people are still getting set up. So we'll give guys a chance to get the tables ready and then I'll start taking you around. Most of the guns that we're going to look at here at Dixon's Gunmakers Fair are going to be from the 18th century. But uh, right now we're going to go a little bit farther back. This is this is pretty neat. So we've got musketeers and conquistadors and we're looking at uh, the 16th and 17th century for these firearms and they are some beauties. And we call French law which actually goes back to 1610. 1610, so. yeah. The... Okay. Well, this is the true early stuff. 17th century guns right here. Very early snap ants locks. There's a few more coming. Well, I shouldn't say a few more. About half as many coming in again. <laughs> well, I'll be but, back. Uh, Uh, here at the Jim Chambers table, of course, Jim does all the Siler locks and Jim Chambers flintlock kits. Let's get some more, some more on this side. Some beautiful finished guns made from his kits. Well, Brad and Shane Emig have Cabin Creek muzzle loaders, and uh, they're located really right down the road from me. They're in, in uh, York County in Hallam Township, and they do beautiful work. And I'm, I'm on tap to write an artisan's profile for Muzzle Loader Magazine for Shane Emig. They're a father and son team, uh, and they make some gorgeous rifles. It's an early. Early rifle, Christian Springs type, made by Brad and Shane Emig. Beautiful guns. I love the guns, but I've got to admit, I like seeing all of the 18th century crafts uh, that are on display at the Gunmakers Fair. And, and this is just some beautiful uh, Pennsylvania Dutch type 18th century pottery. I'm here at Steinhagen Pottery. And I've gotten a number of things from them over the years. They do great work. And I can really recommend these flasks. These things are fantastic. But they make some beautiful, beautiful pottery. Everybody knows it takes a lot of balls to be a muzzleloader these days. You know, we all worry that traditional muzzle loading is a sport for an aging population. Uh, so it's great for me to see somebody getting the younger generation involved here at the Gunmakers Fair. So I hope he picks out a great horn. One of the great things about Dixon's is all throughout the Gunmakers Fair, uh, there are seminars going on on different aspects of gun building or accoutrement making. And they have real, honest to God, stone cold experts telling you how they do it. And it's fascinating. And in this seminar, uh, one of my friends, John DeWalt, who is a master horner uh, in the Powder Horn Makers Guild, the Honorable Company of Horners, uh, he's explaining how he finishes and, and decorates a horn, how he applies ink and color. And uh, it was just a great seminar. And, and John is truly a master of his craft, so it was very interesting. But they have a whole schedule of seminars, so if you're going to come down, check them out. There are lots of top-notch uh, powder horn makers that have their wares here at the Gunmakers Fair every year. So if you're in the market for any accoutrements, uh, this is really the place to come, whether it's powder horns or powder measures or uh, bags um, you can't go wrong if you do your shopping here. All right, here's Sarah Miller she's a bagsmith 
And this is a bag that I just bought from her. I'm getting that Edward Marshall rifle built, and I'm looking for a nice medium sized Pennsylvania type bag. And I think this is going to go with it just great. So thank you, Sarah. You're quite welcome, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Well, here are some of Art de Camp's beautiful horns and some of the fantastic rifles he builds. He really is just a great rifle smith. Well, I got some exciting news at the Gunmakers Fair. I know a lot of you are familiar with the swivel breech rifle I built using a David Price kit. And I constantly get questions about this, people who want to buy them. And David had used up all the barrels that he had. He had had uh, about 130 barrels, which over the years he built rifles on. And these are specially designed barrels made by Green Mountain um, Rifle Works. And David's about 80 years old, and he was thinking maybe he wouldn't do any more. But ever since I did the video build, uh, he has just been inundated with people who want these swivel breech rifles so he's placed a new barrel order he's getting 50 more barrels and he's going to have them in in early august uh, and he already has a waiting list for people who want this gun but if you're interested uh, google david price flintlocks uh, on the internet and go get a hold of david and he's going to be putting these kits together again very soon and they're actually going to be even easier to build than the one that I did because he's having the stocks uh, CNC machined so that the inletting is going to be done for you as, as opposed to a lot of what I had to do to put these together. But it's going to be a great kit. And uh, I'm just overjoyed to see that David is still going to be doing these. Well, there's always something interesting to see here at the Gunmakers Fair, whether it's beautiful finished guns, tomahawks, various accoutrements, uh, craftsman working and this is just a whole variety of things uh, over here we've got some of Leonard Day's uh, great work on uh, older lock kits and his swivel breech so there's no lack of things to see and here is my buddy Eric Ewing who makes some of the more unique bags that you're gonna see like this yeah, I even know more about that. Well, we're here at my buddy Ian Pratt's table. And Ian's not here right now. I'll have to come back later and catch him. Ian makes some really unique guns. Okay, this collection is called the Warrior's Clutch. And I hope that I can do it justice in here. It's going to be at the CLA show. This is a cooperative uh, venture of a number of artists. So Ian Pratt made this beautiful gun and I'm not going to be able to show you because the light's wrong in here. All of the intricate work in it. But Eric Ewing and Sean Webster collaborated to make this bag. Well, this is going to be a major display at the CLA show in about a month, but it's here at Dixon's right now. All right, we're going to try to get some of the details on the smoothbore that uh, Ian made for the Warrior's Clutch. If you can see this painted work he's done that's a part of the finish. I mean, Ian's kind of developed a technique over the last few years of, of putting these layers of finish on with decoration. And it's really just gorgeous. See this whole sunburst design down here it continues on both sides of the stock. I mean, it's just really a fantastic gun. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the neat thing too is how it fades. This is my friend Jim Fulmer who runs the Fort Robodeau Rifle Frolic. And he's also a National Muzzle Loading Rifle Association field representative. He used to be the president of our group. And I'm over here buying some tickets because I really want to win that rifle. So we'll see. 
we'll see how that goes. Well, that wraps up my look at the 2018 Dixon's uh, annual Gunmakers Fair. I have to confess that I spent way more time socializing with my friends than I did working on this on this video. So I hope I gave you a decent one this year because I was just having way too much fun. It was a fantastic event this year. And if you couldn't get down for the 2018 version, I hope you'll put it on your calendar of events for 2019 because it's always fantastic. And I'll certainly be here next year. And, you know, maybe I'll see you too. I, I certainly hope so. So if you've got the time at the end of July, come on down to Little Kempton, PA, and uh, visit the Dixon Gunmakers Fair. Bye.